Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, I know again, it's been a good minute since I last posted a video, but I decided to take a few days off because I had Thanksgiving break. I decided to use that time off from school and a bunch of other random stuff, but I'm back again here guys. So um, I do want to mention one thing first of all is thank you all to everyone subscribing to the channel. Um, just the other day, we were at 50 subscribers, now I'm all the way up to 178. I know that's not a lot, but I do thank everyone who's subscribing. Uh, like I said in the previous video, I did this to help you guys out as well as help me out. It's kind of forcing me to fully understand what I'm doing here um, to make sure you guys understand it as well. So it's kind of a win-win situation. <laughs> I learned something and you guys learned something. But like I said, thank you all. I really do appreciate it. So let's get back to the video here. So in this video, I'm going to be disassembling a .NET program and uh, figuring out how it works. So the program we're going to be disassembling is actually on Hack the Box. Um, I do recommend you guys make an account for this website if you guys want to get good into reverse engineering as well as other stuff like this. I have a bunch of other challenges, but... For this particular one, I decided to do this bypass one. It did say it was easy. It is pretty easy. It's just that you do need to know how to use the debugger. Uh, the debugger we're going to be using today is actually a. Um, it's actually going to be dnspy. I uh, disassemble the .NET file. It won't work in Kitra. I haven't tried it in Ida, but um, I just know that we need to at least use a .NET disassembler such as dnspy and we're going to be using dnspy32 since this is a 32-bit file um, but yeah so let's get right into it it's already downloaded the file I have that thing ready to go right here so let's launch it up and see what it does okay the first thing that it asks me to do as I launch it up is enter a username I'm just going to give it a a a a all right anything doesn't matter then it wants me to enter a password. I'm going to do pass123, press on enter, and it tells me wrong pass, or I'm sorry, wrong username or password, and it asks me to enter it again. So obviously we don't know any of this, same thing. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and launch up our program, dnspy. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the program and drag it in just like this. Okay, so once we do that, it should be in here, and you should see it over here. Um, this one's called HTTP Challenge. If I open it up, we have our PE header files, you know, all of these information. Um, we're not going to be worrying about any of that. We're actually going to go down into here, so that way we can find the source code of the file. We're actually going to be working in here. Right, if we look at these other classes here, they don't really have that much information that we need, um, except for this first one. So, upon inspection, it isn't the easiest to understand fully. It does take a minute or two to figure out. If you've used DNSpy a lot before, it shouldn't be that hard, I don't think. But, um, but yeah, so this here is using C Sharp. Um, but let's go ahead and start reading through this program and figuring out what it's doing. So the first thing I see here is that we do have a boolean flag which is set to the first um, function, which is this right here. Um, whatever the um, output is from here will be set into here. Um, and then we see we have another thing called flag2, which is set to the same output as flag. So these two, no matter what, will always have the same output. And then we see another check here. It says if flag 2, obviously this means flag 2 has to be true. Then we want to go ahead and run what's inside of this function 2, which is down here. Otherwise, we have a console.write line, which writes something. And then it just calls back um, uh, function 0. Which is just this right here. If I scroll down here and let's look at this function 1, we see it's a boolean. Obviously, it has to be a boolean for this to be able to store um, an output. We see that it's returning false. So that means um, flag is always false. And that means flag 2 will always be false. Um, 
but let's just figure out what these um, console dot read lines are doing and or I'm sorry what these console dot write and read lines are doing yeah so in order to do that I'm actually just gonna go ahead and run I'm gonna go to this spot right here um, actually I'm gonna set it right here I'm gonna go to this return false I'm gonna set a breakpoint right here before I do anything so let's go ahead and right click I have no clue what I just did there. Sorry, guys. Let me get. <laughs> I clicked some random thing. Okay, there you go. Okay, so I'm gonna go to return false. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna go up to the debug menu or tab, and I'm gonna press on toggle breakpoint or press on F9. Once I do that, I'm now gonna run the program by pressing start. Press on OK, and you see it says enter a username. Press on AAA. Enter password I'm it again, and it looks like we've hit this point. So that just means that it looks like these two here are the um, username, and this stores your username, this is the password, and this stores the password. And yes, we've hit our breakpoint right here. Um, I can continue this program, and it obviously returns false there, and it and obviously that didn't work so let's stop the program i'm going to remove this breakpoint here actually you can click right here <laughs> okay okay let's analyze function two the function two it seems that it does have another write a console dot write and read line and uh, um but it seems like we never get to that this part and let me set a breakpoint um right here this is a breakpoint right here i'm gonna test something okay uh yeah there. so i'll set a breakpoint here because what i'm thinking that's what's going on here is i run the program press on okay what it looks like is going on is that this is false and it's, it's obviously because flag is this is always false because of this right here and then this is false so it never gets to run through here it never gets to run through here and it automatically just goes to here which should be okay i didn't get to see it there Okay, there it is. <laughs> yeah, so this is this console dot right line is the wrong username or password one. So that clears that up. So that means we need to we need to step into here. We need to be able to go into global zero point two or their second function. How do we do that? Well, we can change the value of flag two while running the program. So. I'm gonna go ahead and set a breakpoint right over here. So that way, once we get to here, we actually are gonna be able to see the um, the value show up here and it'll say false. And we're gonna change that to true. So that way when the program runs, it's gonna jump right into here. So let's go ahead and do that. I press on start, that's okay. Enter username, AAA, press on enter, AAA, but whatever. And we've hit our breakpoint. And as you can see, they're both faults. And I'm gonna go into the value of flag two. I guess we're on flag two here. I'm gonna double click on it and I'm gonna type in true. Press on enter. Now the value is not true. I'm gonna press on, um, actually we'll be pressing, I'll just press on continue for right now. And there you go. So it looks like we have a new section which is asking for a secret key and i'm assuming that that is right here this um console dot right line part of the code here and string b is going to store our input and we see here that we have a check which is saying boolean flag which is a string of empty name and it's checking if this is equal to b and this flag will be true if not it'll just be false and it'll be down here so empty name whatever the string is i'm assuming should enter or should hold our secret keys if i go into here and i type in anything like a random 
things. I press on enter, it's this wrong key, and it's asking me to enter that secret key again. So, which is this right here, the wrong key, this should be wrong key, and it's gonna go ahead and run function two again, which is going back up here, asking us to enter a secret key and store in our input. So we know that empty name, this string up here, should hold the secret key that we need. So let's go ahead and we can set a breakpoint right before the, or right on this um, if statement. So that way we can see what it's being compared against, what this is being compared against. So let's go ahead and put a breakpoint here at line 39. I'm gonna go ahead and restart the program by pressing the start again. Press on OK. Enter our username. And I press here, and I'm gonna switch our flag to true. I'm gonna press on continue. So this should hit our second breakpoint after I do that. Or actually, not yet. We still have to enter um, our secret key. Then it'll hit our breakpoint. So we're gonna put in. It hit it again, I press on enter, and there you go. We've hit our breakpoint, and let's look into here. And we see our value for that string empty name is actually is a string empty name. There's no name. Is actually uh, right here. This is a really secure key, but you can read it from source code, so it sucks. And also, <laughs> we see the our input a a a, which is b. We know we saw that. And we saw the flag right here, which is um, which is false because obviously these don't line up. Um, technically, I can change this to true, and it'll I think it'll still run. Actually, it should. I actually didn't try that yet, but if I hit that, if I change that to true, and I press on step over, let's see. Set again. Yep, it'll still work. Okay, so we can manually do that, and I've got my flag here. Uh, which I can enter inside of uh, hack the box or <laughs> let's let's show you the real way you should have done it um, it's by using this key let's go ahead and restart the program and copy this key and restart the program hey oops uh, hey 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 I'll set this to true. I'll continue. Um, enter secret key at this one, and I can press on enter, and I can press on step over. And as you can see, we're now into this spot right here. The flag is true by us entering in the right thing. Um, I press it again, and boom, we got the same flag. So that is two waves of doing it, I guess. Um, the first way I actually did it before was by actually using the key and then I just show you guys the second way which is just changing the flag okay so yeah that's pretty much all I've got this is a pretty simple one but it is using DN spy and um, we're using a dotnet so the disassembled version of this is different from looking at assembly in um, Ida and Ghidra so pretty interesting hope you guys enjoyed this one and learn something new if you did please do go ahead and drop a like on the video subscribe guys and hit 200 subs uh, by the end of the year hopefully i can do that yeah so like i said that's pretty much all i got and um i'll see you all in the next video